also used to escort uh, the South African three-wing bombers. Yeah, yeah. And I remember that uh, they just got marauders at that time. Yeah. And uh, apparently the bomb aimers weren't very happy with the sights. They couldn't adjust them properly or do something wrong with them yeah. because they were trying to bomb uh, some bridge up the coast. And uh, they seemed to miss it every time. So that we used to call that the milk run, escorting them up there while they bombed it. Eventually they got it right and they bombed the bridge. <laughs> and it was after that that uh, they decided that as there were very few enemy aircraft around in the place, that one squadron would now do some dive bombing itself. And uh, so uh, they fitted all the aircraft with a bomb rack underneath. The trouble with uh, uh, dive bombing in a Spitfire was you had no bomb sites. Oh, I see. Yeah. So you used to just use the uh, gun sight as a marker and uh, aim this at the target or something like that. Then as you pull through, you'd release your bomb. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I remember the first time we went out bombing, uh, there were four of us and uh, we were uh, led by a chap by the name of Cecil Golding, yeah. who was an old member of the squadron and we went to bomb a bridge uh, just outside Florence and uh, we did quite well with that because we scored three direct hits with our four bombs. Yeah, that's fantastic. And uh, it used to be a 500 pound bomb that you yeah, carried yeah, under the Spitfire. Yeah. And uh, then they used to actually put a, what they called an extension rod on the, oh, okay. on the nose. So that uh, if you're bombing uh, gun positions, anything like that, the bomb would explode above the ground instead yeah. of burying itself in the ground and then exploding. Yeah. And on one occasion, uh, we uh, uh, went on a bombing raid. We bombed uh, a bridge. And uh, after that, we went looking for uh, enemy transport to Straff. And uh, I saw a truck uh, below us, so uh, I got permission. I think I was flying with Johnny Sickham, he was the in charge of our flight. And he said, Okay, and I went down and uh, I strafed the, uh, the truck and destroyed it. As I was pulling up, I was, uh, my aircraft was hit by a 40 millimeter under the cockpit. And uh, and the uh, radio was uh, put out of action as well, so I couldn't tell them what would happen, so I just set course for base. And uh, I actually felt quite dizzy at one time. Also got hit yourself? Yes, yeah, so I got hit under the, in my legs, yeah. and so I was bleeding quite a bit. And uh, so I actually tried to stop the by putting my hand under my leg or something. I don't know if that helped or not. But eventually uh, uh, I saw the uh, landing ground near Lake Trasimeno. Yes. We were not far from that. And uh, so I came in to land there and found out that uh, had no wheels, no flaps or anything. So I uh, crash landed on the airfield. Yeah and uh, uh, Sandy Brown, our MO was there again. He, uh, I believe he actually gave me some blood at that time in the cockpit. Yeah. And then they rushed me off to hospital and eventually I uh, was uh, dismissed from there and then sent back to uh, the squadron. Well, okay. yeah. And uh, when I got back to the squadron then I found out that uh, I've been posted back to South Africa. Oh, okay. Actually, when I left hospital, I was uh, uh, given a, 
a document by the doctor to say I was uh, A1 and fit for full flying duties. <laughs> and when I got back to the squad and I showed it to our Sandy Brown, our doctor, he nearly had a fit. <laughs> he, he said the bloke was mad. <laughs> but uh, anyway, it didn't seem to worry me at all or anything like that. Yeah, yeah. And. Uh,